season's greetings to you all in March. Yes, it is March now. It's probably my birthday card. Best it might be my birthdays in March. And it is time to say goodbye to the Dyson DC 54. Let's see how it did or what I think of it after using it for a month. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? What do you see behind you? With the addition of that, pretty much all I've used for the month of March. I've always sort of, you see vacuum cleaners for sale, both new and old. Normally ones that come with a lot of extra tools, Kirby and Vorework mainly. And they, they never get used, and you go, Cor, those tools were in condition, why didn't they use them? And I'll tell you why they didn't use them, because it's such a faff storing them. Dyson's come with the hangy bag, sometimes, this didn't, I don't think this particular one came with it. But even so, I mean, I've got the tools for my little Becco that have been in the bag since I unboxed it. I've used the Tangle Free Turbine tool a couple of times on the sofa, but... Probably our sofa is under the cushions. It's all quite lumpy because it's an old sofa anyway. We picked it up for cheap because we've got two kids climbing all over it. There's no point in buying an expensive sofa when you get pet all over it. And for a hundred pound sofa, you don't care. But this relies on it being flat. As soon as it went over all the lumps and bumps, it was a bit meh, really. On the cushions, you stick it on the cushions and it slows right down as every other turbo tool does. I used it on the stairs once or twice, but I don't know, it's just, they're a really good idea, and I do love them, but as soon as you go to actually use them, I've, I haven't cleaned the cars out this month, it's also got a fair bit of lint stuck to it, because these haven't got built in, you know, removal guards, removal guards, you know what I mean, things that scrape the bristle down. We do also still have two because I haven't actually done anything with this one. In fact, you can see the difference though, between my... This is the one that came with that DC50 that I got years ago. A bit of a difference. So you can see how much this was used by Diane from work. Diana from work when I got it. So we have those two. Never really used it. I haven't touched this. <laughs> That's at all. There's no point because we've got carpets and half floors. So I would put the hard floor brush on and go around everywhere and then put the turbo head on and do the rug. And we got rid of the carpet in the hall this month because our washing machine, a pipe fell off underneath it and Amy had to rip the carpet up to get the laminate dry and get the Vax 6140SX out to clean the laminate. So yeah, haven't touched that at all. I did use this actually once or twice for down the side of the Frigidaire and the oven but probably this is it kills all the suction it's like putting a hand over the end of the wand you can hear it what also happens and you can see it actually from the couple of uses I've done it sucks the bristles into the air path and basically closes itself up like that I mean, you can use it like that but then it's not, you haven't got the brush and this brush is quite stiff and it still does that so yeah again it's you know be better off really if I can take it apart you can take it taking that off putting a bit of tape over there just having a very thick long crevice tool didn't get much use out of that at all I'll be honest it's easy just to move the oven out and clean behind it properly and of course we've got the original brush as well. I didn't put that back in. It's just still in the bag, really. Well, the tools that I did use was this. As you can see, there is a fair bit of lint trapped underneath and it. It's still missing its front row of brushes from when I used it with the DC-11 last year because this is flipping awful otherwise. It just pushes everything away before the two tiny little air paths there look catch it. 
you can see it catches the edge of stuff when you're running in our radiator pipes it has a habit of doing that and then not coming back down especially in use it's not the most you know it pivots but it's not as fluid a motion as the meaner ones but but it's very nice to use yeah you can't you, you 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 can get it very narrow if you hold it like you know carve it like that you've got to pick it up and do it like that that's very good but then it it, it jams and you've got to try and make it move so yeah it's good but could be better oh. let's have a look at these now there was a comment on one of the facebook groups that i'm a member of if you click back in things you'll know of all the facebook groups i don't need to advertise our existence and they were saying that i can't remember what machine it was but these dyson tools wear and obviously cause air loss and i thought this with this when i first got it and now it's been refurbished it still does it there is an air leak somewhere in here when you're cleaning you push back you push forwards and backwards when you pull back it's either this joint here or this joint here or possibly something inside you can feel well not feel you can hear the air escaping when you push forward it goes when you pull back it's there when you pull, and it's very very odd it doesn't really affect anything I'll be honest, and if you clamp your hand over the end, it does block the suction. So it's not too bad, but nothing's really worn. I made sure that all the seals inside are and were, you know, clean and tidy and good when I refurbished it. But yeah, it's there is definitely something weird. I think it's because they clip together. Up there, look, you can. It is moving and it's not worn. That's still shiny. In there isn't really too worn either, but there's a fair bit of fluff stuck in there as well. But where obviously when you have a friction fit push tube, you can push it on as far as it will go. I think Hoover suffered with it a bit with the pit fit twist locking tools. But Dyson's do seem to be worse because they only clip on in a certain scientifically specified way if they wear you know if this rubber seal hidden in there flattens over use which it will it just knocks off the you know the proper fit on it just something i noticed really this very very good use this an awful lot i had to put my hand over there a bit to scrub some stuff out occasionally but I've always liked this tool, I'll be honest. It's starting to hold fluff again, though. These can look terrible after a few years. You've seen the sort of rubbish I buy or pick up and acquire. But they have sat on there very well. I've used this actually more than this on occasions just because it sucks everything into it so you can move it along on our aforementioned rubbish old sofa and so on such forth and actually i i don't use them with the handle i never do on any of the dice it's all pneumatic i much prefer to stick it straight to the end of the hose because you can be a lot more persuasive with it you can get into more places it's a lot more flexible on the end of the hose so it is lovely that they now do that when it's there you end up pushing down it's a complaint i have with the mealers with their what they're called now the you know, the, the, the piston grip handle, that's it. And Hoover with their piston grip handles. You push down, not forwards. It's, it's very odd to explain, but if you know what I mean, you get it. And finally, this. This, this, this. And I'm going to compare this with the other brush because I used it a fair bit before I refurbished it with the old brush in. And with this one, and the one with its black carbon strips. It doesn't dig at all, it floats. I packed up a turbo power for somebody throughout this month. And obviously I used it quickly before I did on our rug. And my gosh, the track lines it left. It went really deep. This just skimmed the top. It got the dirt up. It, well, you know, it was okay with that, but it's a skimmy brush. It works better on lower pile carpet 
but it hasn't got to fluff enough. Upstairs it was great because it did clamp itself down a bit and you could feel it working, but on anything, even remote, like that carpet, our, the test carpet that we use, forget it. In fact, we could probably give it a quick go in a minute. Before we do next month's, this month's, we'll quickly pop that out and check. But yeah, it's yeah, it's a bit weird. It's also covered in dust now, where it's all picked itself up and flicked itself around. It's all inside, all the bits and bobs. That's now not as clean as it was. Big complaint with these clear hairs is how terrible they look after a very small amount of use. But it's done a good enough job. I haven't touched the brush for all this. Very little to note around it. It's not too bad, really. As for the machine itself, well, it's, it is very manoeuvrable. So you pull the hose and it does follow you. But the way our front room is laid out, we've got the sofa sort of as a slight divider that made to stop the kids from running straight from one end of the house to the other. And I put it around the edge of the sofa, I put it all the way down, but then as I get to the end, I've moved on and it turns before it should and gets caught up on these rear wheels, well, front wheels, middle wheels. Very, very annoying. I can 100% see why the cyclone seals on the edges are tatty as heck because it does bind itself up very very easily it's also massive it takes up a lot of space especially with the wands on as they go etc but apart from that the hose could be longer but then I'm a bit of a freak and a bit tall so that's a complaint I don't normally bang on about because that is just me I find it with all the cylinders, they are a little bit short, but let's bring you down and we'll have a look at the machine and how it looks now after many, many empties. So inside, it is still very, very clean in there, which is good, considering it was full of plaster dust when we first got the device. Rubber seal needs a good wipe down as they all do. And there's a fair bit of dirt in there that hasn't been sucked up. It will go up eventually when you use it. There's the usual dice and fine layer of dust all over the place, but it's, you know, I've seen worse. It's not too horrific, let's be honest can see where it bashes into things because there's now paint on the rear wheels where it's caught up on door frames and whatnot. But as for the bin now, I used it, well I use all the vacuums to empty the Beko stick vac because that does get used daily. Amy will whip that around five or six times a day and obviously to make it a bit of a fair judgement on the machine to get all the dirt and because Amy never empties it, I have to. I use the vacuum to clean out the other vacuum. So it all gets the dirt. Problem with this is that as the dirt enters the cyclone in vast quantities, it goes straight to there and then clumps up, which isn't very good. There'll be a picture on your screens now of me with it on the stairs. It's not a good stair machine. But that was, you can see the lumps there because I know you just emptied that. This is normal use. As you can see, it is full. Oh, bit over there. As we go round to the back though, where it leans on the machine, everything bunches up to the side. And again, all the cylinders I've ever had do that. It is very very strange so we're going to empty it we'll do it back here so I can keep the dirt so we can have something to play with on the other ones you pick it up with this little handle here and you push down and not everything falls out a lot of it sits in there so you have to tip it back on itself to get it to do anything and then it all comes up in here so we'll take the actual bit itself off. There we go, there are lots of little nooks and crannies for it to sit in. 
can see it has picked up a lot of fine dust because it's all still stuck in there. There's a fair bit of it sat on the shroud. I'm not going to get this little scraper out. I'll just use my hands. So we'll get all that off. Inside, well, all of the fine dust is now caking the entire thing again, but it still works okay. It hasn't got the massive suction loss it had before, mainly because this is now household dust and not plaster dust, which is always a key thing. So the little rubber, I got a comment on the after video that the rubber codes don't twist, but the dice and videos that came out at the time to showcase the technology showed them spinning with the air because that's how they knock the dust off themselves. So, they obviously aren't, or if they are not quite in the same way that the official promotional video said, I won't link it because I asked Dyson if I could use one of their videos for the V10, the filter washing, they said no. So I went, why? So you get the idea though, you can always have a look for it. Well, apart from that, it's okay. We're not going to take it all apart because, quite frankly, I can't really be bothered. But what I will say is that this is going to a lovely little boy. We've already arranged this, so this is this is now not going to be mine. It's going to a lovely little boy who has a YouTube channel of his own. And hopefully he will take it apart a bit. He's that sort of chap. I'll send him the pictures so he knows how to do it before I get my thread mixed up. So we might well still see the inside of this after normal use. No plaster dust has gone into it. I haven't used it. I haven't had any plaster dust vacuums. So that would be fine. In fact, no, I have. I have one. I bought it here to use Henry. Specifically so. This didn't get any more plaster dust in it. We haven't done any think we need plaster dust. So that is okay. Right. Let's just see if we can very quickly notice any difference, just in case I'm talking rubbish, which has been known, about how deeply this does clean regarding these two. And then we'll get it out of the way and look at what we're going to use in March. Here we are then. So I have my deep pile carpet there. Let's see what the turbo brush does. It is better on my screen than in person. But I need to come this way to the lay of the pile. And if I put it back with just the weight of the machine, it is doing something. Very difficult to push actually. I think this carpet's a bit too stiff. Because this carpet is very stiff and new and unworn, it's quite difficult to push, it does bog down. But that did do okay on our used, slightly matted now front room carpet though, it's not quite as great. Let's put the proper brush roll in and see if we can tell any difference at all. It's the bottom joint. It's that bottom joint there on the flat part carpet. It's a lot nicer. 
this turbo brush, this carpet is just a bit too thick for it. I'd love to see what it makes of this. Oh, I need to get, yeah, that is down. Some mid as well. Not that great. It's just such a huge head. Oh, I can't push that. Oh my god. <laughs> that. That shows you that head does clamp down. That's probably what gave it its EU rating of whatever the heck it got. Oh, so yeah, not the best machine for proper thick, deep pile carpets. Although while we are here, we can see what it picked up. What I'm interested to see is any yellow sand. So obviously you, you will see coming up. You probably won't have seen them yet because I'm a bit queued up, but I've used this carpet a lot for yellow sand. And there is just a teeny, tiny little bit sat in there. Oh God, not a great deal at all. I mentioned this because, and again, you haven't seen this yet, but I have a vintage Hoover with a pattern bag and I did the before video of it a while ago you won't see it until the summer but I ran it over this carpet without doing anything else it's completely unrefurbished, untouched and it picked up all of that all of this dirt but all of the yellow sand and I last chucked the yellow sand down here to do two Hoover Juniors and look, it's full of it absolutely full of it and that was me just pushing it along. The handle wasn't on properly, it was at the wrong height. It was this actually, the Hoover 800. This is one of my current projects with the aroma door. The aroma door capsules out somewhere safe. And yeah, this old thing smashed all of that out the carpet. That hasn't. So it will show you just what an effective deep cleaner they are. Right, I'm going to compose myself after that workout with that floor tool, pack all of this away and show you what we're going to look forward to in March. What is in store for March? Well, Very loud, the very vibrating Hoover celebrity. <sighs> Done a little bit more work to it since this is why you saw it the other week, you see. We well, a month probably now, because <laughs> I wanted to use it, but it was completely untouched before. Some work has been done. I have replaced the missing bolt. These two here, that one and that one, are captive bolts that bolt the whole thing together many years ago, one snapped. So I have now replaced it. Now he's actually a Hoover C, no, Junior motor screw that holds the motor to the chassis. It's an M10, and I have an M10 nut. So that has been fixed. That has squared it up a fair bit, and certainly made it hover better. I had the motor out. Try and cure that awful noise. <laughs> Which it sort of has. The top bearing was a bit seized, it's a bush bearing. So although the actual bearing doesn't spin, it is supposed to move about and it wasn't. And I think it was slightly at the wrong angle and making the motor not quite as smooth. So that has been freed off and I've stuck a little drop of oil on the other motor. But it's still quite vibrating. The other thing I noticed is the armature is looking quite worn and occasionally it does slightly waft of burning. Not too much, but just ever so slightly. So we shall see if it will last really. But once it's running, apart from being a bit noisy, it is very vibrating. <laughs> But it runs very cool. There's no smells or anything from 
the exhaust, so I think it might be okay. It's a bit of a shame about that damage from storage. When you stand these up, that's the bit that leads up against whatever you stand it against. But these are still quite common. I'm not especially worried about that. If we open her up, I have made and fitted a pre-motor filter. That's just literally a bit of general purpose foam. And fitted a bag. I actually found another package of bags that had a little rubber seal. I'm not taking this out because it is a complete sod to get on. But that is fitted. We're going to go with a single layer paper bag for this. And I also bent down this, which basically went straight into there. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure why. So we have bent that back because it doesn't really serve a purpose. It might have had slightly different bags that I've got. But it does the trick, it works very well. We have have done anything to these, so we've still got the hose. Be interested to see if they get any worse or stay absolutely fine. Floor tool is the floor tool. Leave it sitting nicely. Like so. Don't have any small tools for it yet. I forgot to get any out of the shed. But they'll just be standard white Hoover pit fit tools. Nothing really special there. But we do have some mess to clean up, don't we? So let's put some dirt in this thing. <laughs> will just grip itself quite nicely to this carpet. That was all done with the brushes locked up. Now obviously because I'm going to be using it on a hard floor, I am going to lock them up so they are always down. And I'll be honest, for doing the one rug we have, it might provide some agitation as well. Because I don't think it's going to have that much. This is a proper reversal of Anything I've used before actually, because this hasn't got a turbo brush with it. I could, I have hacked my Mida Acunova to work with these before. I did it when I had the Constellation, but the Acunova is broken at the minute and I can't bother to fix it. So we shall go for good old straight suction only. Let's do a bit more vacuuming because this room does need it. <laughs>
stick to this. We'll go simple for the month. We've had a space of fancy dancy millions of tools. I'll just grab the three small tools from the shed to go with it so I can do the sofa and the crevices. And also, hopefully, this will follow me around on the laminate like a little puppy dog bouncing off of everything as it goes. Shouldn't get caught up on anything. And it would be nice. I haven't used one of these since the constellation in year one. And that was a that was a hacked around constellation as it was. As we had the pneumatic motor in it. So there we go folks. One Hoover Celebrity. I think it's a for S3005 from November 1974. See what this is like throughout the month. So Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you soon. Bye bye! But wait, I just thought I've packed away. I've got everything ready to go back in the car. Oh, we didn't look at what the paper bag was like, and oh dearie me. Oh, can't have that. That is what caught my eye, just based on the turt that we just picked up. This pattern paper single layer bag is going to be no good. So we actually need to very quickly get back out vacuum of the month of February. Oh, clean this out. Oh, wasn't planning this at all. Shift filter back in, which just about fits on there, like so. And Wang, one of our good friends, Mr. Heifer flow in. It's not going to look great because it's going to have to be bunched right off to the side, but it does fit on. and seal on ish yeah it does however it's not very secure so what we are going to do is some adjustment now if i can find a pair of scissors which there were some in here Now let me just find some scissors quickly, hang on. I'm going to cut the structure away from the bottom of this because it's the mount that's causing it to not sit completely oh, bound up 100% correctly to the machine. We don't need that either. If I do that, that now does sit very nice. I'm also going to do is a little bodge that I learned from when we HEPA flowed the Hoover Dynamatic, and that is to screw something, remove some screws in order to clamp the bag down. And the two handle screws seem to work okay. Now that, to me, that is sealed all the way around. Whether it's going to be like the Hoover Freedom that didn't quite work. We'll find out, really. You see me clean it all up. If I turn on now, nothing will happen. Um, it's probably not going to fill up terribly well because I'm going to have to fold it off to the side, but it, 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 it should expand and not be too bad. We'll 
pop that in there. Too bad. I could stick it over the top, but that would that would cause its own set of issues. I think we're going to give that a go. How we're going to give that a go is very quickly to vacuum up all the mess that we've just done, because that seems a very quick and dirty test. I'll open up this yet, yeah, it's a single layer paper bag. I can't remember what the brand was now. Tip out some of it, that'll do. Where's the rest? <laughs> sharper suction and we are still yeah we are still clean we are still nice oh, that's what was rattling I left that in there look ah, silly me we are still fairly clean to be fair that bottom bit probably could be pushed on more but I don't quite know what by see if we can make a sort of brace for this is what you've got to do when you want to hepa flow on rubbish there we go so that little fillet piece there is now pushing the bottom of the bag in i think this is a go in fact the dirt is there so it is working so how to hepa flow a hoover celebrity not too bad you could even cut one of these up to use as the filter I cannot quite be bothered. That seems okay. Done. Right. That's really easy now. Good as it's going to get. That'll do. I shall next open that. I doubt it will fit up, I'll be honest. At the end of March. See you then. Definitely now. Bye bye.